me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. David L. Robbins joins us today to discuss his new World War II era thriller, The Assassin's Gallery. This amazingly authentic novel of espionage and politics keeps us speeding through the pages. The Assassin's Gallery is the ultimate historical what if. What if FDR was assassinated? What if there was an immense cover up? Were the what ifs your entree to the story? The Assassin's Gallery was born in the notion that any time a president dies in office, there is naturally suspicion of foul play. Franklin Roosevelt died on April 12, 1945. The diagnosis, of course, was hardening of the arteries and he threw an embolism, a brain embolism. But what if Roosevelt had not died of natural causes? What if there were, in fact, foul play? The Assassin's Gallery was born in that notion, so what I did was I took the exact schedule of Roosevelt from January 1, 45 to the day he died on April 12th. I researched where he was, what he ate, whose company he was in, where and how he traveled. Every single minute of his day was detailed by White House usher logs. I changed nothing. And looking at it, I analyzed it myself as if I were an assassin. How would I get in? How would I get past Secret Service? How would I get to him? And I designed the one assassin with the one plot through the very narrow gate that could reach Franklin Roosevelt and kill him. And that is the assassin's gallery. Your opening scene is riveting. The opening scene in the Assassin's Gallery, in a nutshell, a very, very powerful, very dangerous female assassin is dropped off on a deserted beach north of Boston, Newburyport, New Year's evening, in a northeastern storm. She shows up on the beach and two people are on the beach that are not supposed to be there. Judith encounters them. Now her mission to kill Roosevelt, of course, is at risk. She kills these two people. And, and so the opening scene is important because, one, we see how Judith kills them. We see her abilities, her power. We also see she's brutal. And the third thing we see is that nothing will stop her. So that sets her up to the rest of the book as being a very, very powerful adversary, not only for, for Franklin Roosevelt, but for my hero, Michael Lamech. You get the very distinct sense that she'll kill him, and she can kill him. And that sets up a real good imbalance because my villain is far more powerful than my hero. Why did you choose a history professor to be the only hope for America? Lamech is the reluctant hero. And so I'm really drawn to the everyman characteristics of, of a, just a cat who teaches school. Now his expertise is assassination and, and he applies assassinations to his discipline of political science. And he's drawn in through his knowledge of assassinations throughout history. Do you make history a character in itself? Is this hard to do? One of the first things you do when you do a work of history like this is you want to know the times. You want to know the context of the story. The story, of course, is important, but you want to know when and where it's set. So you've got place and you've got time. For time, I make sure that I, I go to libraries and I read as many newspapers and magazines as I can from this era. I had to determine which buildings were here, which buildings were not. So place and time are very important because I want my reader to put my book down not only entertained, but I want them educated. Thank you so much for joining us. Invite me back sometime. Absolutely. Thank you. David L. Robbins' novel, The Assassin's Gallery, is a history-filled and action-packed thriller, a story as intelligent as it is enthralling. Get your copy today. Is there actual evidence that there was a real plot against FDR, or is this completely fabricated? Not saying. Put it to you this way. The book is as plausible and as authentic as I could make it. Point taken. Point made.